Hi, my name is Matthew Levitt. I'm a playwright, a director, and the co-artistic director of Sixth Act Shakespeare Company. My first meaningful experience, I think, was Midsummer Night's Dream in, in elementary school. They were just sort of introducing, uh, here's Shakespeare. He writes a play, and we're going to do it out. And then they sort of listed all the characters. And all I could think of is, I want to make sure I play Puck, because it sounded like the most fun role to play. Uh, and then we did it, and I remember it was the first time I'd ever heard uh, I guess literature or, or plays that had such imagery. And it was the first time I actually connected imagery with the metaphor within this context. I was sort of blown away by, it. that's clever. People usually don't do that, but he does. And it works and it, it was amazing. And that sort of sparked my interest. And then you read Hamlet and you know he's amazing and, and everything. And then I, in college, I had just one of those lovely professors that you always hope to have at least once in your life. Uh, who introduced Shakespeare more as performative, uh, as in, this really was meant to be performed. This was meant to be heard, not read and dissected. And once you add in that into the mixture, I think you can, that's when you begin to appreciate it for uh, as fun and exciting and wonderful as it is. Because uh, it cannot be enjoyed, I think, just academically. I think it's interesting and it's brilliant academically, but I don't think you, you can really, it can't really enter your, your subconscious and it really can't enter your, your entire being as it can experiencing a successful performance of it. So it spoils you in a way when you get to work with Shakespeare because you get to work with the greatest plays ever written. You get to work with these beautiful texts and this poetry and these characters uh, that are unlike anything else. And yeah, once I really got in the habit of of understanding that you can't really understand any of his works until you, you see it or hear it as it was meant to be, as he wrote it, um, and you leave that sort of academic stigma behind, that's when I got excited about it and when I wanted to be a part of it and do it and, and direct it and adapt it and if I could act, act in it um, as it was meant to be. I think it's, it's like learning any language. You just have to um, study. You have to read it enough and, and hear it enough that eventually your ears don't see it, hear or read it as a, a foreign uh, language, that it, it starts to make sense. And I think the more you read Shakespeare, the it, it's almost that sort of cliche of if you want to learn uh, French, go live in France and hear it and listen to it all the time. And eventually your ear just gets used to it and you, you uh, get used to the, the accents and the, the nuances. And I think it's the same with the Elizabethan text. The more you hear Shakespeare uh, read, the more you read it yourself, the more used to the, the phrases, the more used to the language, the more used to the poetry, you get to the point where you can actually just sort of read it as if it were uh, English, modern English. Shakespeare is meant for actors and actors uh, are very wonderful, talented people and very lucky people because there's nothing more fun in the world than acting. Uh, but for those of us who cannot act but still would like to do Shakespeare, we have to direct. I have to read things, so I'm going to be reading uh, from Henry IV, part one. An example of just why I think Shakespeare is like the cockroach of literature, that he will survive anything, any political or uh, academic change that comes his way, he always prevails as the greatest writer no matter what, he will outlive us all. And here I think is a great example where Falstaff asks Prince Hal, now Hal, what time of day is it, lad? And Hal says, thou art so fat-witted with drinking of old sack and unbuttoning thee after supper and sleeping upon benches after noon, that thou hast forgotten to demand that truly which thou wouldst know what a devil hast thou to do with the time of day, unless hours were cups of sack, and mittens capen, and clocks the tongues of bods, and dials the signs of leaping houses, and the blessed sun himself a fair hot wench in flame-colored taffeta. I see no reason why thou should be so superfluous as to demand the time of day. Mm -hmm.